Today at Radio Bocconi, we're going to meet Federica Tremolada, Managing Director, Southern and Eastern Europe, Spotify. Federica, thank you for sharing your time and wisdom in this time of pandemic at Bocconi. Hi, Gian Mario. Thank you so much for inviting me to this executive chat. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to be here today. So let me get started with a question. Uh, Spotify is one of the few European digital unicorn created since the advent of the web. Can you share with us the fundamental changes in the business model since Daniel Ek created it in 2008? Spotify has been launched more than 10 years ago by Daniel Ek with the one clear goal, providing users a easy way to access to music anytime, anywhere. And Spotify succeeded in this mission by providing music via streaming and substituting with a viable business model any type of other piracy behavior um, in the market. What we didn't know at that time was that it was not just the world of music to be revolutionized, but the entire world of audio. Users are now spending an equal amount of time watching video and listening to audio. On average, they're spending more than two hours every day listening to radio. And the revolution of streaming has brought us into the next phase of audio, which is uh, now the era of what we call podcasting. So more openness, more personalization and more podcasting. Still, I have a question, Federica, about uh, democratization of music or uh, the affirmation of uh, uh, traditional oligopolies. Uh, in a recent US uh, uh, chart, uh, the top 100 chart, Drake gained 27 positions out of 100. And still in one of the recent Grammy nights, uh, Beyoncé uh, reached four awards uh, uh, for a total of 28 awards in her uh, lifetime career. So my question is, are we living an era of democratization of music like we used to think, or we are back to traditional oligopolies? The mission of Spotify is to provide millions of creators the opportunity to live off their art and share it with billions of fans around the world. If we look at the numbers, there are now roughly 57,000 creators, artists, that are accounting for 90% of the streams on the platform. And this number has grown by four times in the last six years. So this is really a proof of the diversity and increased diversity um, on the platform. Also, the number of uh, artists that are actually earning more than $1 million um, has been growing by 90% uh, in the last three years. And not only that, also for artists that are actually um, are earning half a million per year. We shouldn't also forget that Spotify is the number one destination for discovering artists. We have a very an excellent pro program, which is called Radar, uh, which is allowing users locally and globally to discover new artists in their countries. That's terrific. Now, Federica, with disruptors like Spotify and uh, in the music industry and Netflix in the video industry, the entire entertainment business has been living in a period of big changes, uh, by the way, boosted by also the pandemic. Uh, what are the core trends uh, you foresee in the so-called new normal? Audio is uh, increasingly taking the center of users' lives. So I expect one of the new trends will continue to be podcast. We have never listened to so many podcasts as we did during 2020 and especially during the period of the pandemic. If we think that there are now more than 2 million of podcast titles on the platform and uh, among these titles, 68% were uploaded just in 2020, we really understand the size of this phenomenon. And also the number of hours we spent listening to podcasts has doubled from 2019 to 2020, taking now a share on Spotify, which is of 25%. Another trend will continue to be ubiquity. The opportunity for users to listen to their favorite content, whether it's music or podcast, anytime, anywhere, from any device. And we have never switched to so many devices like we did uh, during the pandemic, from our smartphones, but also especially to all our smart speakers, desktop, game consoles, or TV, connected TV that we have in our homes. Federica, let me conclude with uh, a personal question. Uh, you've always worked uh, in digital and new ventures. You have worked for Buongiorno, for Google, for YouTube, uh, and now uh, Spotify. There is a general saying that goes uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, and new ventures uh, in digital particularly are not for women. 
Can you falsify this claim with your history and experience? It's undeniable that gender gap uh, is there, is present, uh, both on the digital world and uh, in the music industry as well. What I've seen through my experience is actually the situation is increasingly improving over time. And we have never discussed the gender gap as much as we're doing during these days. I also have to say that I'm coming from a very privileged position as uh, Spotify is clearly investing on diversity and on gender gap overall. We have recently launched a program which is called Equal, which through the platform is giving voices to female artists and female broadcasters uh, around the world. We have also created a board of NGOs that are actually uh, coming to us and they will receive investments from Spotify in order to continue their mission of uh, reducing gender gap. I have to say also that it's our responsibility as managers to grow the next generation of uh, female managers. And this requires like a lot of passion, a lot of time, uh, but it's definitely key and it should be key for all our managers, male and female, to keep this as a top priority in our agendas. This is all very promising. So thank you very much for sharing your uh, wisdom and your words with us. And I look forward to hosting you back on campus with our students uh, uh, in the fall. Thank you, Gian Mario. It will be an honor for me to be back in Bocconi, not just virtually, but physically as well, as soon as this will be possible. Thank you so much again for hosting me.